wow, I feel so completely awesome right now. I'm standing at the Wharton School and I get to write with actual chalk on an actual chalkboard. And you can tell how like ritzy this place is because the chalkboard has been scrubbed clean at the beginning of the day. I'm here on a Friday and I'm really hoping that nobody comes and chases me out of here. So what I want to talk to you about is um, Audi recursive hierarchies. And let me first go through each of those words. Audi, I'm hoping you're starting to get the feeling by now. Audi means the access structure is outside the information that it, um, that it, that it categorizes. It's a hierarchy, so the kind of categorization that it does is into folders and subfolders, categories and subcategories, parents and children, right? That's that hierarchical concept. You can think about it as an outline, but what I hope you start to do is start thinking about it a little bit more deeply as parent and child relationships with a, with a parent, child, grandchild, great-grandchild, and some, then some number of items listed at any one of those levels. Hierarchies can have items at any level. You can have items right under the root. You can have items in any folder underneath. Or, as often is done, no items except at the terminal level, the lowest level of folders. So that's irrelevant to us at the moment. What I want to give you is a structure for understanding this idea of an Audi recursive hierarchy. Again, Audi meaning that it's outside the information that it indexes. Here's the information that it indexes over here. Oh, I love writing with chalk. Okay, there's the information that it indexes. And over here, is the hierarchy. Okay, level one, level one, level one, level two, all the way down to there, and then we even have a level three here. Okay, and then inside here are, let's do it this way, pointers. Can you see that? Pointers to what? We have items over here. Items, one, two, three, four. The actual item is over here. The hierarchy is over here. Now this is metaphorically over here and over here, right? We may be talking about the same instance, but the items are in part A of the instance, and the access structure is in part B of the instance. And what makes this happen, what makes it an Audi structure, is not only that the access structure over here is outside the items, but how those two are related. We have pointers here in a level two, and they point to items. So they're not the items themselves. The items themselves are not in the hierarchy. Pointers to the items are in the hierarchy. If the items themselves were in the hierarchy, it would be an any hierarchy, not an Audi hierarchy. It's an Audi hierarchy because the pointers are outside. Now, the other nice thing about this is that it can demonstrate something called polyhierarchy. Polyhierarchy means an item is at two different places in the hierarchy. So now I'm all the way down here. I also have a pointer here, and it's going to also point up to this item number one. Notice item number one is at two places in the hierarchy. And that's perfectly fine because item number one is not actually in the hierarchy. Item number one is only pointed to by the hierarchy. And I can have as many pointers to item number one as I want. So item number one can appear 5, 10, 12, 15 times in the hierarchy if I want. Now, a completely different issue is whether it should appear that many times in the hierarchy. That's a more of a policy issue, and I don't want to deal with the policy issue right now. I want to deal with the, with the structure issue. The structure issue is that if I want my items to appear multiple times, my best choice is to have an Audi hierarchy. Okay, so I really like this Audi hierarchy. Now, having, um, having given you kind of the conceptuals of the Audi hierarchy, let me give you some of the physicals. How exactly in an instance a schema and a transform is this Audi hierarchy um, worked through. So of course I want you to take a look at your, um, look at this. I can do that. I have as many blackboards as I want. I can have billions of blackboards. I can raise this one up so you can still see it. I want a classroom like this. I want you dub to get classrooms like this because I love chalkboards. Okay, anyway, here's the structure. So keep the structure in mind and now let's talk about the mechanics of it. So the mechanics of a recursive hierarchy. To be recursive means that it's folders inside of folders inside of folders inside of folders inside of folders, with each folder having the same structure as its parent. So that's an interesting concept. Let me see what we're working with here. We're working with categories. So let me use the word category. So I want you also to look at your images as I do this, right? So we're working with categories. Categories inside of categories inside of categories inside of categories. And the constraint is that each category, no matter what level it's at, parent, child, etc., it always has the same structure as any other category. 
So if you think about that, that's the way your hard drive works, right? A folder, no matter what level that folder's at, always has the same structure, it always has the same characteristics as any other folder, no matter what level it is. How do we achieve that in a schema? The answer is by globals. So I'm going to make in my schema over here, here's my global area, and I'm going to create something called a category. Okay? So in my globals, I'm going to create a category. Now over here, when I'm actually defining the schema, and in this case I have it under recursive Audi, categories, category, right? So I have categories, categories under here, and then category here, and this is a one, two, as many as you want, right? And now in order to make it so that I can have children categories that are the same as the parent category, I have to go down here, and of course a category has an ID, right? And a category has a title. And then what does also a category have? It also has categories under it. Category with child categories. And of course, this category can also have categories under it. How am I going to achieve this? I'm going to achieve it by noting that my category is global. If I make this category global, remember the little arrow sign here says that it's global in the, in the, um, in the schema, and I make this one global. Now I have a global category here, and the global category says that it's allowed, oh, by the way, I have to say zero here to infinity, zero to as many as I want, because if I force every category, if this was required, every category has to have a subcategory. Can you see that it would just go on forever? That's, um, that's called infinite recursion, right? The, the category has to have a subcategory, but the subcategory also has a sub, have to have a subcategory, so it goes on and on and on into infinity. So I have categories with subcategories. Each of those subcategories, by the way, has exactly the same structure as the parent category, and this is what gives me that structure that I talked about before. The recursive hierarchy has the form that every subcategory has exactly the same structure as its parent category. A category can have as many levels of children as you want, and each level of children has the same structure as any of its parents. We just got that by making this global. We got the ability for any category to have subcategories, as many as you want, including none. Right? This is a zero to infinity down here, so as many categories as you want, including no categories. And they also have the idea that any subcategory has exactly the same structure as its parent. Okay, that's representing the Audi structure. Um, oh, by the way, forgot a big thing here. Down here are, and probably you can't see that, let me raise this up a little bit. Down here are some number of item refs. Zero of them to as many as I want. Zero item refs all the way up to infi in, an infinite number of item refs inside this, inside this schema as well, which says that any category can have some number of item refs. So remember what I said earlier here was that we have the hierarchy over here, and that's what I'm modeling down here. I'm modeling the hierarchy, pointing by reference to the items who were some, that are somewhere else. The category structure itself is defined by this category and its child categories being global and the item refs are what create the pointers. So this structure right here represents an Audi recursive hierarchy. It's Audi because it has those item refs pointing to items that are somewhere else in the info base, and it's recursive because I have that global category that's inside itself, allowing me to have any number of subcategories all with the same structure as the parent. Okay, thing number one, that's the schema. Now let's talk about the instance. And let's see if I can get another board here for the instance. Here we go. So the instance is actually pretty straightforward. I have a category tag, or I have categories. Let me write this in the middle. Let's see. Oh, put it up here. Categories. And then under that, I have a category with a root, I mean, excuse me, with an ID. And I'm going to call that ID root because it's the root category, and then it has a title, blah, 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 blah. 
and then it has a subcategory. And that subcategory has an ID. And let's call that C1 for child 1. OK, and now that category has whatever, as many things as I want in it. Right? It can have subcategories, titles, right? all that kind of stuff. But then eventually I get to a list of item refs. And let's call it I1. OK, so I have, mm, let's do this. Pull all of these down. This is my Blackboard management system. And pull this one up so that you can see it nice. I'm hoping that you can see it pretty well in the video. Um, I'll save these as HDs as much as possible, so hopefully you can see the writing on this Blackboard. If you can't, you can always obviously follow along in the um, you can always follow along in, the, uh, in, in the, the images that you have on your screen. So we have categories with subcategories, and we have some set of item refs, as many as we want. And as I said, because they're refs, I1, the item that I'm pointing to here, can be in as many different, um, as many different parts of that schema, as many different parts of that instance as, poss as you want. So we have, let's see, nice. No, this is the one I want. We have this structure. That's the schema, and that schema gives rise to this instance. OK, now on to the final thing, which is the transform. And what you need in the transform in order to make this work. OK, so this is a hard concept. And in order to understand the concept that I'm just about to give you, you have to start with some basics. The first basic you have to start with is the idea of a, tra as a, of a template call. One template can call another template. And how do you make that template calling idea, one template calls another template, into a recursive, into the way to render a recursive hierarchy? So actually, let me pull the, uh, the schema back on and give you conceptually what you have to do in order to make this schema work. Excuse me, in order to make the transform work. You have to process a category. Right? So there's some transform, some, some template code, some transform code that processes a category. And when it sees the category, it needs to put out the title. And if, that has, and if it has any item refs, put out links to those items. And then if it has subcategories, it has to do the same thing. So the same idea comes up in the transform as comes up in the schema. In the schema, I said, the categories the, the subcategory has to have exactly the same structure as its parent category. And I did that with this global thing. The global thing is what allowed me to create the recursion. What creates the recursion in the transform is something very similar. The template that processes the parent has to be the same template that processes the child. Because they have the same structure, it can be the same template. So when I have a, a template in an XSL file, as long as I'm, I'm doing things of the same structure, the same template ought to hold. Right? That's the way that transforms work. I write a transform to the, the, to the specifications of the structure of the thing that I want to transform. In this case, the thing that I want to transform is a category. So I'm going to create some category code so that will transform a category. And then the trick is, and let me bring up my picture of this so that I'm getting the right nomenclature that you're looking at as well. Um, I have code that's going to call, that's going to process a category. And then when there's a subcategory, not if there's no subcategories, but when there's subcategories, I'm going to call myself. Because myself, the, the, the transform that I'm in, is the appropriate transform for transforming categories, but I'm already in it. So I have to call myself. And if you're a programmer, you get this idea already. I'm going to have a stack, and I'm going to continually push the instances of the, of the category transform onto the stack. And I'm going to be able to walk through all the branches, transforming all the categories and subcategories until I come to the bottom of the branch. Then I pop something off the stack. If you're not a programmer, the way to understand this is to maybe not even understand it, maybe just to get it to work. But the way to understand it is that the same transform that transforms a parent category transforms the child category. And so I have to give the child category to that transform. I call it from inside itself. OK, so let me get the nomenclature from the, from the transform that I'm giving you um, so that I do this right. 
do one line and OK. OK, so I have two transforms. The one is match equals forward slash. Right? That kicks everything off. And then the match equals forward slash, um, I create the HTML infrastructure. I create the HTML tag and the body tag and all that sort of stuff. And then really, all I'm going to do from here is call one that I'm calling here do one line. That means do one line of the hierarchy. I might have called it category. Probably calling it category would have been um, the right thing to do because it's a category transform. But do one line is generic. So I kick it off. I put in all my HTML, right? There's HTML above here, et cetera. Whatever else I need to do on that page. But the big thing that produces the hierarchy, that renders the hierarchy, is this do one line. So that's over here. And now we have do one line over here. And what do one line does is number one, it puts out a category. Oh, actually, am I? Sorry, let me, let me fix this. Hold on. I got my eraser so I can fix stuff. And I got my beautiful eraser here so I can beautifully fix stuff. What I want to say is that I forgot to say is that this do one line is inside a for each. For each category. Let me just say for each category. I'm taking shorthand here to make this simpler. For each category, call do one line. And I write so fast that you probably couldn't read it even if you can see this very well. But what this does is it slows me down enough so that when you're following in the, um, in the transform that's in the picture on your page, at least you can, um, uh, you can follow along. OK, so it's a for each. For each category, do one line. So I'm going to do this do one line routine. If there's 10 top level categories, I'll do it 10 times. If there's one top level category, I'll do it one time. So for each category, do one line. Do one line, first of all, puts out the category. And if you look and you transform the code for doing that, it says there's a p tag. And it's got a certain indent in it. And that indent is appropriate. Oh, yep, got to do one more thing here. Sorry, I should have really looked at this more closely. Call one line and pass an indent. OK, so I do one line and I pass an indent to the one do one line. And so do one line needs an indent in order to work. OK, so the do one line puts out a category folder line and it indents it depending on what the value of the indent was that I passed. So put out a category and indent. OK, now two. So first it puts out a category with the appropriate indents. And then second of all, it puts out item refs, or put out item links. It takes each of those item link IDs, all those item ref IDs, finds the item that it corresponds to, and formats a link. If you haven't picked up on this already, you're going to pick up, pick up on this by the end of the class. The way we create links is title is the hot text. ID is the thing that allows us to create a URL or an href. The href is, is defined or is derived from the ID of the item. And the hot text is found as the title of that item. So I'll let you look at the details yourselves because I want to get a bigger picture here. The picture I want is not of the details of the transform, but how in the large scale the transform works. For each category back in the main transform, the match equals forward slash, we call do one line with a particular indent, the beginning indent. Let's call it five pixels, or let's see what it actually is here. Uh, 10 pixels. OK, so we start out with a 10 pixel indent. Now this one's going to put out that category line for the very first category with a 10 pixel indent. Then it's going to put out a list of links under that with also a 10, probably going to increment by 10. We're going to put this one out with indent plus 10. 
Okay, so that's creating the outline structure. Now the third thing and the coolest thing about this is if or for each category, call yourself. Do one line. This is very cool code. I really like this a lot because it's so slick and it's so sophisticated, but it's actually very simple once you, once you understand how it works. And now call one line. I can't move this up, right, because this is the back. So call one line. Hopefully you can see down at the bottom here. I think you can. Indent pass. Indent plus 10. OK, now this one in effect goes back to here. I call it if there's if there's category if there's subcategories, I call myself my do one line, it puts out the subcategory with the indent, but this indent is now incremented by 10. Then it's going to put out the links incremented by 20. Then if there's sub subcategories, it's going to call myself again. This time with an indent plus 20. This is the way it walks down through the branches of the hierarchy, walks down through the branches of the instance. And for all the instances, for all the, where are you? Uh, sure, let's use this one. This one's more schematic. I start at this level one, and so my match equals forward slash does all of these level ones. This one, this one, and that one by calling do one line. Do one line itself has the same for each category, so it's going to do it for all its level twos. The level two, the level two version of do one line is going to do all the level threes. Anytime I hit an item ref, it's going to make a link to the item using the reference to form a link ID. OK, there's a lot there. You might have to think about this a little bit harder. You might have to go line by line through the transform to get it. But what I want you to get from this lecture is the concept, the big picture. Recursive means that. All the children have the same structure as their parents. When we do that in the schema, we're using global to make that happen. When we do it in the instance, it's really pretty straightforward. We just type in a category under a category, literally enclosed in the category, and give it the same structure. The transform is where it becomes a little bit harder to understand because we have this recursive call. We have do one line, that transform, that template, being called by itself being called by itself for every subcategory and every sub-subcategory. The result is that I will build an outline starting with an indent and indenting all the way down to the first branch. It'll jump right up to the second branch, indent all the way down, jump to the third, the third top level heading, the third, third branch, indent all the way down to create, uh, to create an outline. In this case, the outlines are created with indents. In other cases, I can create them using other techniques. I could have divs inside of divs that hide and show. I could have bullet lists inside of other bullet lists that hide and show. I can have sophisticated things that drive drop-down menu systems. But all of that is a little bit of, is, all that is the implementation details. That depends on the navigation widget you want. It doesn't alter the fundamental structure of the transform system. And the fundamental trans structure of the transform system, finally, to summarize for the last time, you know my technique of telling you the same thing about a billion times. Hopefully that I restated enough ways and from enough different angles that one of them will catch you. So the final summary here is the recursive transform will do the same code for every category from whatever parent category it happens to be in. That's what makes it recursive. I have one one function, one transform, one template called do one line. Do one line has the ability to call itself as long as there are subcategories. And as long as there are subcategories, do one line will call itself and it will effectively walk all the way down through the outline. OK, that's a recursive Audi hierarchy. And let me end with this. If you didn't understand that, if you, didn't, if you couldn't figure it out, then I want you to fall back to this position. I don't understand it, but can I use it? Can I take this transform code and this schema code and this instance code, and can I tweak it to use my names instead of Bob's names and still get it to work? If, that, if you can do that, then you have everything you need to make it out of the course. I sincerely hope that you try to really deeply understand this concept, because it's a really cool concept, and it'll serve you well for the rest of your career. But the fallback position is, I can't really understand it, but can I use it? Can I copy and paste this code, put it in my transform set, and get it to work so that I can have a recursive transform? and maybe not even understand it. All right, so I'll sign off from Wharton. And um, today I'm going to go up to Bryn Mawr and do a couple more lectures from there. And so I'll see you there.